Hello YouTube, I'm NPC, and today I'm making a tutorial for you guys. Now, um, this is like, I'm the third time recording this, but I'm experimenting with different, um, uh, screen recorders, because lately Camp, this Camp Studio hasn't been working for me. It's been like a bad mesh between Sony Vegas and my loot, my laptop, and Camp Studio, and it's, it's, um, I'm just trying new things. So hopefully this, uh, the quality for this video will be a little better than previous ones. So this is part two of my Angry Birds tutorial. In the previous t t tutorial, I talked about the physics, and today we're going to Game Maker, and uh, I'll be showing you how to use those physics concepts in our game. So start off, we'll create two sprites. First one we're going to call SPR Bird. Click Edit Sprite, Add some image, Transform, Resize the canvas, and set it 24 by 24. That's just the size that I felt works pretty well with um, our sling. So now we got our edit mode. I'm just going to select red because that's the color of the main bird. And I'm going to make a quick circle. There we go. That's it for the bird. One last thing is make sure the origin is at the center. This will make the coding work better for us. And then next we're going to create the sling. And it's right. Again, new submage. Transform, resize. Unselect keep asset ratio. Set the width 32 and the height to 64. Alright then. So then go, we'll go in there. Now I'll select the line tool and orange coloring and make the line a little bit thicker and then I'll just draw a quick sling. This tutorial isn't about graphics, it's about programming, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this kind of st this stuff. So there we go, that's the rather horrible sling. And we're going to set the origin to x, x to 16, y at 0, so it'll be like right between the sling. So, Alright. Now moving on, let's create our first object. We'll call it OBJ sling. In the creation event, all we're gonna do is create one variable. I'm gonna call it oh let me move this down a little bit, there we go. I'm gonna call it global dot sling equals true. True. Ah. This this variable represents whether or not the, the bird is is has been shot yet? Are, is the bird still in the sling, or is it out in the in space and subject to gravity? So sling equals true, meaning it's still attached to the string. We made this a global variable so that we can be accessed by other objects. So that, that that's the, that's the circumstance when you use global. All right, moving on. We're just gonna go to the draw event, and we only drew the stick for the sling, but now we want to draw the actual band for it. So first off, since we're in the draw event, we're gonna we need to draw the sprite because whenever you go into the draw event, it overrides um, everything else that's happening. Um, everything else that's being drawn. So the first argument is sprite, so we're gonna type a sprite index because that's the index of the sprite we currently have. Next one, submage. So we're gonna type an image index, which is the in submage we currently have, and then next one, x and then y. And that's all there is to it. And if you have Game Maker 8.1 or higher, you can type down draw self like so. That way, it'll, it's the same thing as the code I just put down. Only it's a lot quicker, as you can see. All right. Now we're going to draw the two lines that represent the band that go around the bird. And so I'm going to type down. Um, so we want to draw the bands only if global string equals true. Only if we're in the stage where the, we're in the sling. So if global dot sling equals true. We're going to draw two lines, one one coming from the left left prong, one other coming from the right prong. Prong. So draw a line. X minus fourteen comma y. So this is be the coordinates of the left prong. And we want to draw it to the bird. Obj bird dot x comma obj bird dot y. Now obj bird is not yet so highlighted because we haven't created it yet, but we'll be creating it in a second. Next line we're going to draw. Is exactly the same, only the x coordinate is x plus 14 rather than x minus 14. Alright, and that is all we're going to need to do for the sling. Make, well, let's make sure to put the sling right there, and we'll move on to create our bird. OBJ bird. And set this right, and we're going to move on to the correction it. So, all I want to put down, for, we want to make two variables. First, mass equals 1. We'll be using the mass for some of our calculations. It's technically not necessary from a programming point of view, but I also want to make sure you guys understand the physics behind it. And mass is important in physics. So, um, next thing is clicked. We'll be using that for our calculations. Um, 
so if it's clicked, we want to be able to we want to be able to drag it if it, if, it, if it's in the sling that is. So first off, it equals false because we haven't clicked it yet. And then when we do click it, so mouse left pressed. When that happens, we want to uh, set clicked equal to true. All right. And then if the mouse button, if the left button is being held in at any point in time, so global mouse left button, then that means that we would want it to um, move with the mouse if um, it's in the we're in, if we're in the sling stage and if it's being clicked. So if global dot sling equals true and clicked equals true. Then I want to move with the mouse, so set x equal to the, what, the, the x value of the mouse, which is stored in the constant mouse x, and we'll set y equal to the y value of the mouse, which is stored in the constant mouse y, like so. Alright, there we go. Now now we need to take care of when the mouse is released, so when we want to want the bird to actually be launched. So we'll go to mouse, global, left released. So again, we're going to need to check if it's in the sling stage. And we're also going to need to check if it's if the mouse uh, the uh, the um what bird's being clicked. So click equals true. All right. Let me just check my notes. All right. So this is where all the magic happens of the initial movement. So first off, click equals false because once we release it, it's no longer being clicked. So click equals false. And next, global dot sling equals false because it's being released, so it's moved moved on from the stage of being in the sling to being shot out into space. And then here's the here's the important part. We're gonna set the h speed equal to obj sling dot x minus x. And so the the further away, um, so let's see, this will remain the same. But we'll, we'll be controlling this value depending on how, how far we drag with our mouse. So the further we drag it, in this case we drag it to the left. So the further we drag x to the left, the smaller it would get, and therefore making this a bigger number. So the bigger this is, the further away we drag it from drag it from the from the sling, the faster the h speed is. And we're just multiplying point one five just to make sure it doesn't get too hectic on the for as far as the speed goes. And then and then this we want it to be equal to our force. So we're going to go ahead and divide that by mass. Like I said earlier, um, it's not really important from a programming perspective, but I want you to understand that we're, we're making this our force, and force equals mass times acceleration. So I'm divided by mass to get our acceleration. And we're setting h speed equal to our initial acceleration because there's no other speed affecting it at that point. And then we can, we can do something pretty much exactly the same for our v speed. So obj sling dot y minus y times 0.15 and then all in parentheses and divided by mass. There you go, simple enough. Okay, and I believe that's all everything. Alright, one more thing. So we, we shoot the bird and then it moves, but but we want to be able to test it a few more times than that, so we need to ha put some code in there to make it um, restart from the beginning. So I'm going to say uh, to, to grab the event other outside room. So once the bird is outside the room, we're gonna restart the room. So room restart. All set. Now we'll set up a room and then we can test it. So I'm gonna set up my room, and I am going to set. Go to settings and change the dimensions to make it fit my recording window better, and to make it look nicer overall. And then we're going to go down to the bottom left corner, so it'll be down this area. Let me just make, go ahead and make this bigger. So, I'm going to put the catapult down, or the sling, I guess. And give it a little bit of space over here in this area for um, for the bird to be dragged back. And for as far as the bird starting position, it's going to be right there in the center, but we got it unclickedly underlining. There we go, right there in the center. So we can go ahead and play it now.
Okay, so now I click it. Now I can move it around because click is equal to true within the, within the bird, and lines are being drawn from from the catapult over to the bird to show that we're being it's being dragged back. And once I release it, it should move, which it doesn't. Ah, I the variable is clicked, but I typed on click at one point. I apologize for that, but no worries. It's the glitch told us exactly what happened, so we just go right in the code and fix it. So that was right here, and so you have to type click. We want it to be clicked. All right, no worries. Let's test out again. Okay, so now click and everything else. That, that's all working fine, and I release it. Now it's actually moving, and when it goes inside the room. It goes and restarts, so that no matter what direction I go, see it goes in the direction accordingly. There you go. Now that was the initial part. Now we're going to add on some planets. So to do that, we're going to create two sprites. And the first one call SPR Planet 1. And let's try add some transform resize. And then I'm going to make this one 96 by 96. And then let's see, I'll select blue. And I'll make a circle just like we did with the bird. These are alpha sprites. Presumably, if you were to make a game using these concepts, you'd make them a lot better. Okie dokie. Now I'll create another planet. It's PR Planet 2. And it's right now. Um, if, if you remember the physics tutorial, we want bigger planets or bit planets with more mass to have a stronger gravitational pull. So we're going to make this one bigger to illustrate that concept. So 256 by 256, I believe it. No, I take it back. 128 by 128 is what I did. Yes. That's what I did. And we're going to make this planet green. It's a very bright green for a planet, but oh well, we don't care. And it's important that we center both of these planets for the coding. Okay. Now I'll create an object for both of them. OJ planet one. Assign the sprite. Now there's two variables we want to set in, in the creation event. The first variable is mass equals three times power ten comma thirteen. Alright, this is a very big number. So 3, you know 3, and we're multiplying 3 by this number. And um, if you're in, let's see, if you're, I suppose if you have started algebra, you'll you'll be familiar with 10 squared, or 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4, and, and those type of things. That's what this function does. It takes this first number, in this case 10, and puts it to the power of this number, in this case 13. So this number is equal to 10, or actually it's equal to 1, and 13 years behind it, so it's a very, very big number. That's um, that's important for gravity to work because gravity is very weak force, and therefore we need to make the mass extremely high in order for gravity to have an effect at all. And next variable is going to be we're going to call it gravity range, and this can be the range of uh, of gra of the gravity. Now in real life, gravity's at infinite range; it just becomes so small it's insignificant at one point, but in, um, in the Angry Birds game, they have a little circle around the planet to show that's the range, so that's why we created this gravity range. This will be the radius around the planet to where um, uh, the, our birds can be affected by its gravity. So, we'll set this one equal to 200, so it'll, it'll be raised to 200 around the planet. And then we'll go ahead and draw that circle. Like I said earlier, we got to go ahead and draw the sprite because when we go and draw it, it overrides everything. So it's right index, image index. If you do this often, you'll, you'll have it completely memorized in no time. Don't, no worries. Next, we're going to draw a circle. Draw a circle. First argument is x. Next argument is y, because we want to be centered at x, y. Because we centered our planet, it'll be right, right in the center. Next is radius, and we're going to set it equal to our gravity range, which you know we set up in the creation event. And we can make it bigger or small depending on how far we want it to be able to affect the bird. And the outline is the width of the line. I'm just going to make that 5. It doesn't really matter. 
All right. And we'll duplicate this, and OBJ Plant Two is going to look almost exactly the same. Difference one, we change the sprite. Difference two, we make the mass a little bit bigger. So instead of three, we put down five. And also, uh, as a side note, um, these values was a little hard hard to figure out. Um, you have to pinpoint it because if you do it too low, it won't affect the bird at all. If you do it too high, it'll have such a high effect on the bird that the bird just directly crash land into the planet. So you got to keep that in mind when you're doing it. And if you're making your game, you want to have it, have it act in a certain way. Be prepared to do a lot of tweaking and changing numbers around. Okay, so now we're gonna make a, another object called OBJ Planet. There's gonna be no code in this one, but it's gonna serve as the parent to both these planets. So when we're running through the code later, it'll make things a lot easier for us. So as parent, set OBJ Planet for both the planets. Okay, now we're gonna go through all that physics stuff in the creation event. First, I'm gonna use create an array. Um, I have an array tutorial on YouTube that I'm quite proud of that you can check out if you don't understand arrays. I believe last time I checked, if you typed on Game Maker Arrays tutorial, it's one of the first results on the YouTube search. Quite quite proud of that. And um, yes, you can go ahead and watch that if you're confused about arrays. But for now, I'm gonna type down planets zero is it equal to the first planet? So this will be the first index in our array, and then I'll make the next index of our array. So planets one is equal to OBJ planet two. So the reason why I do this is because later on in the code we're going to need to calculate the gravity for all the planets, and I just want to create a list of planets so that um, we we know what we need to go through to check for. Because yeah, sure, if you um if you have like two planets, you can I could just go through the code twice, once for both the planets, but. If you have more planets or different types of planets you want the bird to be able to react to, it's far more efficient just to do it like this. And then we're going to create another variable called number of planets. I'm going to set equal to two because there's two planets in this list. This is necessary for the code later. So now we're going to go through the big long code that's probably the most confusing and it's also the most fun. Okay, so we're going to create two variables. I'm going to set gx equal to zero and gy equal to zero. No. This is step event. So every time it goes to the step event, which is like about 30 times per second, it'll set these variables equal to zero. So we have a fresh slate to work with every time we go through this code. And this is the acceleration, so we're gonna need so it's gonna change every second. So so yeah, we'll just go through the code. I'm gonna create a for loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and type it out, and you don't have to understand it yet, but I'll explain in a second, no worries. Alright, so we're going to have our code here to calculate the gravity. So what this does, it, it creates a variable i is equal to zero. And then there's another section here. This is the condition, so keep going through this loop as long as that condition is met. And then that's called the increment or decrement, or the change. What This is what will happen to i every time it goes to this loop. So in this case, i is equal to zero. So this condition is still met. I is still less than the number of plants, and the number of plants is equal to two. So let's go through this code, then it'll, then it'll go through this step and add one to I. So now I is one. It still meets this condition, so it goes through the code again. And now it adds another one to I, and now I is equal to two. So now it no longer meets this condition, so it'll stop going through it. So it'll go through this loop once for every planet, in this case twice. First thing, we check whether we're within the range of the planet. So I'm going to type down if point distance, which is distance between two points, and the first point we're going we're gonna to check is x, y, and the other point is planets i dot x. Now this is confusing to, to a lot of people. This will call the planet we're working with, because remember we create an array, and planets, planets with a zero here is planet one, and a planet with the one there is planet two. Okay. So since i is equal to zero the first time through, this will be equal to zero, so it will call up planets 0, which will give us OBJ planet 1. And we'll find the x value of that object, and then that's all we needed. And we'll go through just the same logic here, and we'll get the y value.
and we're going to make sure that that's less than the gravity range of that particular planet. So we'll call that particular planet, so planet I, and we'll, call, we'll ask for the gravity range of that planet. So this code in here will ensure that our bird is within the range of our planet and therefore we want it to be affected by the gravity. So now, if you remember, um, in the physics tour we, we talked about axial versus polar um, coordinates. So we're going to first use axial coordinates to calculate the force and then we're going to convert it over to, um, no sorry, we're, we're going to first use polar coordinates to calculate the force and then we're going to convert it over to axial co coordinates so that we can add it on to our initial acceleration pretty easily. So we're going to have create a variable force which is the magnitude of the, the polar coordinate thing and and this is going to be equal to the big equation that we saw in the trailer and I also explained it in the previous tutorial. So first thing is the gravitational constant so the gravitational force constant and that's equal to 6.674 times power, and then parentheses, where I'm going to type down 10, comma, negative 11. Alright? So this is a very small number. We can use these, this power function to create big numbers and small numbers. So since this is negative 11, that means that it'll be 0 0.0000, and so it'll be 0 0.10 zeros, and then it'll get started with this number. So it's a very, very small number, which, and it has to be very small, because that's, that's the way it creates an accurate representation of the force of gravity. So we multiply it by the mass of the object we're dealing with, or mass of the first object, which is the bird, and time is the mass of the planet, so we'll call the planet planets i dot mass. And that's everything we have in the numerator. I'll put that in parentheses. And then we'll divide that by the distance between the two squared. So the distance is equal to this thing right here that we just used. That's equal to the distance. And then I'll put that in the power function to square it. So power that distance, comma two. Alright. Now, so this big long thing is equal to the force. And if you want to understand this then you're then you're pr pretty well off. You'll probably get through this tutorial pretty, pretty well. And if you don't understand it, go back to my physics tutorial, look through the equation and and uh, put all the pieces together. Ask yourself what each step means. Make sure you understand what each step means, because I'm here to make sure you understand it. And I want you to understand. It. I don't want you to just copy down the code. Next thing is theta, the angle at which this force is pu pulling us. Because you know, if it's pulling us to the right, that's a completely different scenario where it's pulling us to the left. And in this case, we're doing it in terms of 360 degrees, and it's it's a little bit different than that. Okay, so theta. So, um. I need more water. Right, well, I'll get more water later. I'll, I'll be fine. So there's a handy function in Game Anchor that will um, find the, uh, the the direction that that is um, pointing from the bird to the planet pretty easily. So that function is point direction, and the first two arguments are the coordinates of our our bird. So that's x y. And then the next two arguments are the coordinates of the planet, so that planets i dot x and planet planet it's i dot y. These are the exact same inputs as um, our point distance function, but it does different stuff with it. And then we multiply that by pi divided by 180. This is important because we're going to be plugging this into a trigonometric function in a second, and the trigonometric function will only accept radians. Radian is basically a new unit that um, a bunch of mathematicians made up to make them feel sm smarter. But it's really not too hard to convert it. So you can multiply it by pi divided by 180. If you want to convert from direction to degrees, or uh, sorry, degrees to radians, and you can convert, you can multiply it by 180 over pi to convert it from radians back to degrees. So that's all I really need to know. There's more significance to it, but. I don't feel like explaining it. I don't even fully understand it myself, so I wouldn't be qualified to explain it. So now, we have gx, which is going to be equal to our overall gravitational force. So we're going to add to it. So every time it goes through this loop, it'll add add to it the force we got from the individual planet. So gx. 
and this is the x direction. So I'm going to do force multiplied by cosine theta. I went over this equation um, in the physics tutorial. So it's you basically think of it as a triangle, and you take the x um, part of that triangle, and the way you get the x part is by taking the cosine of the angle. And then through similar logic, we can do y minus equals force times sine theta. Um, the minus sign there is, is important because the axis is flipped in Game Maker. In, in math, in math class, um, the po positive y direction is up, but in Game Maker and all programming, all programming basically, the positive y direction is down. So that that's why I need to flip flip it using that. All right, and that is all of our for loop. So now we'll we'll um, add this gx and gy to our h speed to make a change. So h speed plus equals gx divided by mass. Gx is a force. So in order to get the acceleration, we divide by mass. Capiche? So v speed, and we're going to add. Uh, gy divided by mass, same thing. So this is the big important code. If you understand this, then you, then I'm happy. This is the, the point of this tutorial. All right, into into our room again. I'm gonna make the background black because you know, after all, it's a space game. We need to make it black. And we'll just go ahead and add our two planets. So I'll make this one here and this one here. There you go. I'm hoping that they're they're ranged near set because that that's the um, that was the that made it a whole lot more complicated. We went through a lot of effort to make it work that way. So, oh, I hope in the range in your sex. All right, test it out. It's black. There's our first planet, and there's our other planet. All right. Um, one problem I noticed: I drew line, I drew circles around the planet, but the default color for the circle is black. So that's silly of me to make the background black. Let's see. It. I think I remember off the top of my head how to change the color. I don't know this for certain, but we'll just try experiment a little here. So I think it's draw set color. Please turn red. There it turns red, and the color will make it seem. What do you think we should make it? Let's make it orange because it's my favorite color. And then we're gonna have to set the color for our other planet as well. And this will make um whenever they're drawing stuff, they'll use this color. Oh my gosh, my voice is going, going away. Okay, test it. Lovely. See these orange circles? Now we know exactly when the our bird's within the range of the, our, our planet. Let's see, this is, oh, that, that's also orange. Hmm, that's unexpected. Okay, so we'll shoot it. If we shoot it like that, it doesn't even come within the range of the planet, so nothing happens. If I shoot it like, like that, it just goes straight towards the planet, and that's all. If I shoot it like that, you can see it gets, well, I don't know, you can't really see it gets pulled towards the planet. We, we really shot too fast for it to be back by the planet, but if we if it's, if it's shoot it slower, you can see it's pulled in by the planet, but not quite enough, so it got through, and then it got killed by that green planet. I had meant to, to code a collision with the bird and the planet and make the rumor start every time it collided, but I think you see the point still after this. <clears throat> okay, so, and, and well, I have nothing more to say. This is the end of the tutorial. So, this is how you how the, the physics works. And it exceeds being pulled in. And if we make it really sl slow acceleration, we pull in more. And all that. Ugh, my voice is completely dead. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, um, here, here's the outro. You've just watched a for tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like the video and leave a comment. This helps out my channel. If you found the challenge helpful, you can find more of them at my website, www.synforge.co. You can also find my games and my other tutorials there. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.